Ladakh is an experience that is almost impossible to pen down. This attributes a just small part in which superficially highlights the beauty of the region. But deep within Ladakh is an endless charm that attracts people from all over the world countless times. When one says about Ladakh and combines it with a road trip, instantly a lot of things start processing within our mind. For we have seen a lot of people on social media and read a lot of content on internet over the years about the land of high passes. We have seen emotions of people ranging from jubilance to struggle, from ecstasy to misery, from successful attempts to unsuccessful counting of years going by and then looking forward to the next year. There are numerous stories circling around Ladakh. The stories of people visiting the place or the local inhabitants, their lifestyle in the unforgiving climate. I have showed you all the places which I visited and their rich diversity in culture, in vegetation, in the landscape. This time I will take you to the wildlife of Ladakh. My first encounter was with the black-billed magpie. The weather in the evening was not good as there was gusty winds and clouds forming over the mountains. Suddenly I noticed a blue and a black bird jumping around in the small river stream flowing in front of us. Large conspicuous black and white bird related to crows and jays, unmistakably long tail and bold pattern, especially visible in flight often spotted along the roadsides in open country, fields and towns, social and inquisitive, often in small groups foraging on the ground. This bird I could see abundantly across Ladakh. Habitat. They prefer mainly mixed habitats. They avoid unbroken forest or tree praying. Includes rangeland with trees, farms and farmland, riparian areas, shelter beds and residential areas. Behavior. Primarily they forage by walking along the ground, often bold in flight and while perched. They, they are one of the few bird species thought to be able to detect food by smell. Characteristic that may allow them to easily find carrion, nesting and up to 3 feet in diameter. The female lays between 5 to 9 eggs and she alone incubates them. The young leave the nest after about 4 weeks. The russet or the Himalayan sparrow is known well enough in the Himalayas to have a distinct name in some languages. The sparrow feeds mainly on the seeds of herbs and grains but it also eats berries and insects. Sun, sand dunes, heat and thirst, that's what comes to your mind when you think of camels, right? No wonder the hardy, humpbacked, leggy animal that can go days without water is called the ship of the desert. Have you heard of the camels with two humps? Well, these double hump camels are called Bactrian camels, but that is not the only reason they are special. These camels are found in cold deserts where it never rains. 
in Nubra Valley Ladakh one can find Bactrian camels. Far from a desert, the region is at an altitude of 10,000 feet above sea level. The Nubra Valley was a stopping place of historic Silk Route. Caravans of traders along this route used Bactrian camels. They traded with the countries of Central Asia and South Asia. Today these camels are mainly used for tourists. Getting to see this camel takes you through an unusual part of the world. Seeing the camel is as much as of a discovery as the route to them. Driving to Nubra Valley is enchanting, especially crossing Shiok. The region shares border with Pakistan and China. To get to Nubra Valley, one has to take the road through Khardungla, which is 18,300 feet and is the highest motorable road in the world. Camels and wrestling, yes, the two can go together. To impress a female, three or four male camels fight among each other by biting their hums. We notice this phenomenon even in Nubra Valley among the double-humped camels. The red-billed chog is a bird of the crow family which has glossy black plumage, a long curved red bill, red legs and a loud ringing call. It has a buoyant acrobatic flight. So now coming to the showstopper, marmots. They are big squirrels which have subsistence species that live in the mountainous areas of Ladakh. They live in burrows and hide throughout the winter but mostly marmots are very social and use lurid whistles to interconnect with each other. Himalayan marmot eats green and various types of grasses, berries, lichens, mosses, roots and flowers. The squirrels are large and heavy that weigh from 3 to 7 kg contingent upon the species. They are capable of staying in the cold environments and they have small ears that are covered with fur, short legs and strong nails for digging. The hairs are dense and marginally rough and yellowish brown, brown reddish, reddish brown, black or a combination of grey and white. The killers of marmot in Ladakh are foxes, coyotes, bobcats, eagles, hawks, owls and humans. The lifespan of the Himalayan marmot is 6 years or 10 in custody.
The brown headed gull species are distributed in the Indian subcontinent, Southeast Asia, China, Tajikistan, and Kyrgyzstan. These gull species are highly migratory. The adult brown headed gull has brown hood in summer. This signifies its breeding plumage. This ends my presentation on the Ladakh series. I hope you enjoyed whatever I brought in front of you. Just a small request that these kind of trips incur huge expenses. Your subscription and your appreciation motivates me to bring more beautiful videos in front of you. Thank you. Take care.